the Lord God bless you. Praise the Lord God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Road Street, directly behind the Walmart loads on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Sunday morning service, along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband, Stan, so faithful, so faithful. Amen. Minister Harvey Cole and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly, amen. My right-hand man, Deacon Nathaniel Stevenson, amen, and his beautiful wife, Linda, and my homegirl from North Carolina, Sister Tanisha Pratt, we are Christ Our Life Ministries, and we want to thank you for joining us on this Sunday, July the 21st, 2024, to hear a phenomenal word from our Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. We want to continue to remember our loved ones, our pillars that have gone on to be with the Lord, members here at this church, pillars that have left us since they joined this ministry and was pillars. Sister Beverly Conyers Evans and her beautiful husband, Brother Harry Evans, Sister London, Sister Beverly left us on March the 4th, 2022. March the 4th, 2022, Sister Beverly left us in, on April the 8th of this year, Brother Harry left us. Pillars here, they will never be forgotten. In Christ Our Life Ministries, I'm going to remember my doggone pillars. You better believe that. You better believe that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for joining my sister church, Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, pastor by the phenomenal minister, Kenya King. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. You ought to join them and be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, Deacon Nathaniel Stevenson, my right-hand man. I love you. Thank you for joining me. I tell you what, if I would not have worn the green shirt Tuesday, Thursday night, I'd have wore it today. I, I still wanted to wear it anyway. But I figured since my name was red, I'd go on and go with the red shirt and be even more on fire. Because this word is on fire today. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. Join me on YouTube. Join me on YouTube, amen. Free of charge. Just type in Roderick Red with two Ds, amen. Hit the search button. There are over 450 messages on my YouTube channel. You can listen to them and be blessed. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, today's message is fire. I'm here to tell you. Hallelujah. Part two. Part two. No, there is not a part three. This will do it right here. And I think, I think once I get done with this part two, that's going to be about all y'all are going to be able to handle anyway. God bless you, Sister Selena. I love you. Thank you for joining me this morning. So faithful you are to this ministry. I love you. Hallelujah. Part two, the heaviness, the heaviness of thoughts. Amen. If you listen to part one, I'm going to tell you this part. I kept trying to tell you part two. This is the one right there. This is the, this is the fiery furnace one right here. The name of Jesus. The heaviness of thoughts. Hallelujah. Our foundational verse is out of Genesis 19 and 16, even though we won't tap into it a lot today. Amen. But this is the foundational verse for this uh, two-part series. Genesis 19 and 16, it reads on this wise. It says, but Lot hesitated. See, hesitation. Thought, his thoughts made him hesitate. His thoughts made him linger. His thoughts made him delay to get up out of the city that God said that he was going to destroy. God bless you, Stan. I love you. This is a fine brimstone message today, Stan. Hallelujah. But Lot hesitated. So the men seized his hand and the hand of his wife and the hands of his two daughters for the compassion of the Lord was upon him. And they brought Lot out and put him outside the city. 
See, 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 God's word is always trying to put you outside of the, the heaviness of thoughts. Because you know, thoughts build this build this this room or this this city that we live in, and, and, and the Lord's compassions is always on us. And when the Lord puts his compassions on us, he put his compassions on us to take us out of the heaviness of thoughts that is making us not remember the goodness of the Lord in our life. Because we have to manage our mind, because if we manage our mind, because your thoughts control your life, you have to manage your mind, because if you don't manage your mind, then them thoughts are going to control your life. And you don't, and, and you don't want thoughts controlling your life. You want life controlling life. Ah, oh, somebody didn't catch that. You want life controlling life. You know, thoughts are not life. Thoughts are not life. You, you need life to control life, and you need the life of Christ to do the controlling of the soulless man life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this word today. Thank you in advance for this word. Oh, it's going to come with some fire. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall and consume the sacrifice. Eliza prayed and the fire fell and consumed the sacrifice. Even though they had wetted it, poured water all over the sacrifice. Three times they poured water over the sacrifice and the fire still fell out of heaven and consumed the, the sacrifice and consumed all the water that was in the ditch around the sacrifice in the name of Jesus. Let your fire fall and consume every heavy thought that's on the mind of the hearer today that they may be brought out of whatever heaviness that's on their life that you did not put on it, but that a thought put on it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Let us go into this heavy word. Hallelujah. You think you got a heavy thought? This word is heavy. Here we go. Our living... Our living as believers is to glorify God in all that we do. In all that we do, every, every second of your life on planet Earth, especially as a born-again believer, is to glorify God in all that we do. That is what our living is supposed to be today on planet Earth. Satan knows this. Satan knows that that is supposed to be our living is to glorify God. Satan knows this, so to prevent it from happening, so to prevent it from happening, he uses the heaviness of thoughts to attack our minds. No, he don't attack our heart. He don't attack, no, he, he attacks our minds. Because, because you know, because ain't nobody going to make you stop saying in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of your life. Ain't nobody going to make you stop saying in your heart, amen, that uh, that you don't love you. God bless you, brother-in-law David. I love you. Thank you for joining your brother-in-law this morning. We're talking about the heaviness of thoughts because we got too much stuff on our mind that God did not put there. And so Satan knows this. He knows that if, if he can attack our minds, that we will forget to do the easiest thing we do with our mind. <laughs> that, that, that's why he puts heaviness of thoughts on that, because he knows that if he can attack our mind, that we will forget to do the easiest thing that we do with our mind. And the easiest thing that we do with our mind is remember things. That's what we remember things. The definition of the word remember is calling to one's mind something done in the past. Oh, because y'all don't got a problem calling nothing in mind. That's why y'all don't forgive people. That's why, that's, why the, that's why the black people today is trying to get uh, uh, reparations out of the white people because they keep calling to their mind the slavery days. We just can't get past. So the easiest thing about us 
that Satan attacks is the mind, because Satan says, oh, it's so easy to, it's, you know, they might, they call themselves born again believers, but I'm going to tell you, but they ain't got the mind of Christ, and I'm going to prove that they don't got the mind of Christ, because I'm going to constantly attack their mind with the heaviness of thoughts, and they're never going to remember God, and, because, and, when they, and if they don't remember God, they're not going to give him the glory. Do his name. God wakes us up every day. God feeds us every day. God clothes us every day. God gives us a house to live in every day. God gives us healthy children every day. God gives us, uh, amen, jobs every day. God gives us good weather every day. God protects us in the, in, uh, from tornadoes, from hurricanes, from earthquakes, from, from uh, heat exhaustion, from heat. God just protecting us, and we ain't giving him the glory because we don't remember nothing but what Satan attacks our minds with, which is a bunch of thoughts that you didn't get from God. Hallelujah. When you are in a very hard situation, when you're in a very hard situation, just remember God. When you're in a very hard situation, just remember God and a miracle will happen. All you gotta do is just remember God. That's why I tell y'all, I tell I got that new saying, Christ in my mouth, faith in my heart, prayer on my mind. Them, I'm a, them, that's my new saying. I say that every day. That's my, I got it. I'm going to tell you, when, 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 a, when a very hard situation comes to my mind, I begin to say Christ in my mouth, faith in my heart, prayer on my mind, and I start praying to God about that very hard situation that Satan keeps bringing to my remembrance because the mind is the easiest thing to attack on us because Satan knows that we are still carnally minded individuals trying to live by faith. Hallelujah. When you are in a very hard situation, just remember God and a miracle will happen. The heaviness of thoughts puts all of us in hard situations. But the way out, the way out is to remember God. Let, oh, come on now. Let me tell you what we are born, what we as born again believers have to do. Oh, yes, Sister Selena, thanking the Father consistently. That's what we do. Even in the midst of very hard situations, thank the Father consistently because all it is is a test. And we're going to talk that today. We're going to talk. We're going to talk this board I got behind me. And we're going to talk the, the, the importance of remembering God. Because every time you remember God, then you'll talk to God. And when you talk to God, you'll give God the glory do his name. But let me tell you, let me tell you what we as born again believers have to do. Let me tell you what we have to do. Here it is. This, this is it. We have to remember God so much that we are forgotten. Oh, come on now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that again because that might have went over somebody's head. But don't worry about that. Pastor Ray going to explain it. Sister Selena, Deacon Stevenson, Brother Stan, Brother-in-law David Sutton, we have to remember God so much that we forget about ourselves. That we forget about ourselves. We, we, we forget about everything. What's this, Sister Lena? God bless you, my sister Ann. I love you. Thank you for joining me today with your husband, David. Amen. Sister Lena, we have to, we have to remember God so much that we forget about ourselves. And we re, and watch this here. And we gotta rem, we gotta remember God so much that we forget about the objects that he has added to our life. Well, what's the object? Material that can be seen or touched. See, we, we, we gotta remember God so much that we even forget about the material that we see or touch that God has blessed us with. All right, come on now. Somebody gonna listen to me today. This mess is only gonna get deeper and deeper. Hallelujah. We gotta remember God so much that, that we and in everything he gave us is forgotten. Something that the rich young ruler wouldn't do. Hallelujah. Forgotten where? Forgotten where? In the remembrances of past victories as we battle the heaviness of thoughts attacking our mind. Oh, we got to hold on to 
God's unchanging hand. Oh yeah, denying the self and dying in the flesh. Oh yeah, dying the flesh. And, and Sister Selena, not only and Sister Selena, you know, not only our flesh, but to the to every fleshly object that's been added to us. And that, that includes Reggie and Nezune and my grandkids. And I mean, I mean, we gotta remember God so much that we forget about. The objects that's been added to us because if we remember the objects, then Satan is going to put heavy thoughts on us that he's going to take them objects from our life. He's going to destroy them objects. He's going to cause them objects to work. We got to remember God so much that we forget these objects. Because Satan, is, because Satan attacks our minds with the objects that we own with the objects that we love. Oh, come on now, somebody. He attacks us in our mind with the objects that we love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here it is right there. When you just don't get it. Here it is when you just don't get it. When, when you just don't get why, 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 why mess is going on. When you, when you just don't get why, why things is happening around you and, and to you that just don't make no doggone sense when you just don't get it. And even when you feel confused, even when you feel confused, remember God is not. Mm -mm, mm -mm, God ain't confused. God ain't never confused. God ain't never confused. That's why you got to remember to call on him. That's why you got to remember Christ in your mouth, faith in your heart, Prayer on your mind. You got to remember that. Because even when you feel confused, remember God is not. Emotions come and go. Truth remains forever. Because them thoughts going to take you through a roller coaster of thoughts. But no matter. I'm going to tell you something right now. But don't act like y'all ain't never rode on the roller coaster. But I'm going to tell you. When you got on that doggone roller coaster, nothing in your mind made you think that that was not going to be a safe ride and that that ride was not going to end because if you knew that wasn't going to be a safe ride and if you knew that roller coaster wasn't going to come to an end, you'd have never got on the doggone roller coaster. So if you're going to get, so if you're going to get on the Christ life, if you're going to get into Christ life, if you're going to get on the road of faith, then stay on the road and stop allowing the heaviness of thoughts to cause you to stagger. In the name of Jesus, we getting there. We getting there. Hallelujah. Our God, look at this 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. Y'all ever read that? 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12 reads, he says, our God will, this is what he said. He, this is a prayer. He says, our God, will you not judge them? Our God, will you not judge them? Judge what? The, the heaviness of thoughts. Will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army of thoughts that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes, our eyes are, is not on the object, our eyes are on you, we remember. We remember the times when we face hard tests and you brought us out. We remember. We have no power to face this vast army of thoughts that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are fixed on you. We remember, we remember the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Psalm 77, 11 and 12 reads on his wise. The psalmist says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember. I hope, I'm, I'm a, I hope ain't now one of y'all ever said, read, read this, this, this chapter. And, and, you're not, and you're not remembering that you read this chapter. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. Ha, there it is. Because I told you, remembrance is, is, is um, calling to one's mind something done in the past. Whatever's in the past 
is an old thing. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. What's the definition of the word wonders? A feeling of great surprise caused by experiencing something new. Caused by experiencing something new. Hallelujah. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. Surely I will remember your feeling of great surprise caused by experiencing me something new when I was facing heavy thoughts that were trying to come over me like a flood. But, but every time I remember too, you lifted up a standard against them. I will also meditate. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. I will always have Christ in my mouth, faith in my heart and prayer on my mind and talk of your deeds. When, when you're gonna do it? When the heaviness of thoughts begin to attack your mind, that's when you need to do Psalm 77, 11 and 12. That should be your prayer. This should be a prayer. I'm, I'm you, now, hey, so Selena, next Sunday, next Sunday is, is prayer Sunday. That's the last Sunday in uh in in in, in July. We get our last. We, we're gonna be talking about prayer in case if y'all done then got slow to remember the six part series of prayer I taught on, and then the last the last Sunday in June. I thought every last Sunday till I die, we're gonna do a a, a, a teaching on prayer. Here's a prayer for y'all. Here's a prayer for y'all. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Pray that to God. Tell it to God every day. Tell it to him. Tell it to him when, when, when the heaviness of thoughts begin to attack your mind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Here it is right here. Here we go, Sister Selena. Time to hit today's teaching. Romans 4 and 18, Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope. But what had him against hope? The heaviness of thoughts. But he kept believing in the hope, even though the heaviness of thoughts had him against, had him trying to get him to go against the hope. He believed in the hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Do y'all know why Abraham is called the father of many nations? Y'all know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because the heaviness of thoughts was never able to stagger him. The heaviness of thoughts was never able to stagger You That dude had, man, I ain't getting ahead of this message. This dude had heavy thoughts, man. But they was never able to stagger him. What's the definition of the word stagger, Pastor Red? To walk or move unsteady if you're about, as if you're about to fall. To walk or move unsteady as if you are about to fall. Romans chapter 4, verse 20, 21. Romans chapter 4, verse 20, 21. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. So uh, apparently this, this guy kept remembering God's promise. And so that's what kept him from staggering. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Through, um, see, we, we, with the heart man believes, with the mind man unbelieves. And then, and Lord have mercy, if you better not let unbelief get in the heart. Because God says, have not an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Because if you do, you're not going to end the end of my rest. And them doggone heavy thoughts going to drive you crazy. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Here it is. But was strong in faith. What Sister Selena was strong in faith. Here we go back to the opening message. Giving glory to God. Giving glory to God not to objects. Giving glory to God, not to objects. And being fully persuaded, fu fu fully, fully persuaded where? 
in his mind. Even though the heaviness of thoughts was on him, he was fully persuaded in his mind that what God had promised, he was able also to perform it. You know what? I'm going to tell you. When I tell y'all, in November of 1993, when God spoke to me on that cot and told me he was calling me into the ministry to move to Augusta, Georgia, start a church called Christ of Life Ministries, I was going to write books. I was fully persuaded that what he had told me on that cot, he was able to perform it, and he performed it, and that's why, yeah, that's why people can't affect my ministry. You can't affect my ministry because I'm fully persuaded in my mind then I'm doing what God called me to do. Whether you like it or not, find you another preacher. Whenever a believer fails to give all glory to God, no matter the circumstance, the heaviness of thoughts is the sole responsible reason behind it. Whenever a believer fails to give all glory to God, no matter the circumstance, no matter the heaviness of thoughts, the heaviness of thoughts is the sole responsible reason behind you and I not giving God all the glory in the circumstance. That mess, that mess, the heaviness of thoughts, that mess did not stagger Abraham. Watch this right here. Sister Lena, Dickens Stevenson, Brother Stan, my sister Ann, my brother-in-law David. Watch this. Abraham, the, 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 the heaviness of thoughts did not stagger Abraham on the, watch this Dickens Stevenson, on the greatest test of faith any flesh-born man ever faced the sacrifice of Isaac. The heaviness of thoughts did not stagger Abraham on the greatest test of faith. Somebody go hit me this. There is no greater test of faith in the Bible than this doggone test God put on Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. No greater test in the Bible. There is none greater. How did he do it? How did Abraham do it? How was Abraham able to pass this test, the greatest test of faith of any man that any man ever faced on planet Earth. That, that's why he's called the father of many nations. That's why he's called the father of many. That's why he's called the father of faith. Because this guy had the faith to withstand the greatest test of any flesh born man on planet Earth. The sacrifice of Isaac. How did he do it? How did he do it? Remembrance. He did it by remembrance. He did it by calling to one mind something done in the past. It, see, until you start remembering to call the things that God told you versus what you're going through, forget about passing the test. I have to remember, I have to, no matter, no matter how hard the thought, no matter how heavy the thoughts get, I must remember what God told me on that cot in Egypt. I got to remember that. Oh yeah, Diggins Stevenson, Abraham knew God couldn't fail, but do we believe, but do we know that? Do we know like Abraham know? How did he do it? Remembrance. Look at this, look at this. Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. Let's look at it. God said, Abraham, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Yeah, I know you old. I know Sarah's old. She's going to bear you a wife. And I want you to call his name Isaac. I will. I will. That's the, that's the number one thing right there. That's the number one word right there. Do, if God tells you I will, you can you can you can take that to the bank. That is a thousand dollar. That's a thousand 
credit score. Y'all, y'all looking at these credit. Oh, I got a I got a 780 credit score. I got an 800 credit score. Man, that man, God, when God stepped, that's a thousand, that's a thousand credit score. That's a thousand credit score. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. I will establish my for a, for, for a covenant that, 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 that ain't going to endure through time. That ain't going to endure through circumstance. He didn't say that. He said, I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. What everybody that walks by faith, everybody that is a faithful person, God establishes his covenant with them. That was, that's the first word. Dick and Stevenson, Sister Lena, Brother Stan, my sister Ann, my brother-in-law David. That's the first word Abraham got. That's the first word Abraham got. Genesis, that's Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. So then after we get out of that chapter, then we go to chapter 18 and 19. Then, we, then God is talking to him about Sodom and Gomorrah. And then all of a sudden, here we go. Isaac is born. Isaac is born. After, after 25 years of waiting for Sarah to have Isaac, Isaac grows up to be a nice young man. Abraham and Hagar done had Ishmael and God had been told him to that the, 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 the son of promise shall, shall not be uh, in the living with the with the son with the bond woman's son. Uh, get rid of him. My covenant, I'm going to establish with Isaac. Now this everlasting covenant that I'm going to establish with Isaac uh, in, in Genesis 22 and 2. This is what I want you to do. I want you to take him. I want you to take your son. I want you to take your son. Then I'm going to establish my covenant, my, my everlasting covenant with him. And there will be an everlasting covenant with, with him and his seed after him. I want you to take him. I want you to take now your son, your only son whom you love. Whom you love. Here it is. Let me put my word in there. Take now this object that I gave you in Sarah. Your only object that me and you've been that I've been dealing with you about for the last 25 years that I have now given to you that you love I want you to take this object named Isaac and I want you to go to the land of Moriah and I want you to offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you I want you, I want you to take this this I, I know you love I know you love your children. I know you love your wife. I know you love your husband. I know you love your family members. Now, take these very things that you love and offer them as a burnt offering on one of the promises of which I told you. Oh, somebody, somebody better catch this teaching today. Y'all better catch this teaching. God talking to y'all. I'm going to say that again. I want you to take, I want you to take your children. I want you to take your wife, your husband, your, all, all your blood relatives, your family. Take, 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 take whatever object you in love with. Whatever object you in love with, I want you to take it and offer him or her or it to me as a burnt offering on one of the promises. On one of the promises which I tell you. Here it is, Brother Dick and Stevenson. Here it is, this, 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 this today's message. It's the first words, it's the first word God speaks that you must keep in remembrance because God does not change. It's the first word God speaks that you must keep in remembrance because when you're in the test, when you're in the test, you're going to hear 
the second word. The second word comes to, to, to test you to see if you remember the first word that came to pass. In the test, you're going to hear another word. The second word is going to come from God. But if it goes against the first that came to pass, remember the first. Remember the first. If God gives you a promise, and then after he gives you the promise, he blesses you with an object that you love. The purpose for the second word is to test you to see whether or not you love the object that he's blessed you with over the promise to give you the object. Because the first promise was that you would receive the object. The first promise not only said that you was going to receive the promise, but that he was going to establish that promise as an everlasting thing. And, 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 and so once you, God sees that you love this object so much, he's going to send another word that not to destroy the object, but to test you to see if you're going to do what he said because it is up to you to remember the promise that he put upon that object in the first communication you had with him. You want me to tell you why you can't remember the first promise? You want me to tell you why you can't remember it? the heaviness of thoughts because you ain't got Christ in your mouth, you ain't got faith in your heart, and you ain't got prayer on your mind. That's why you can't remember the heaviness of thoughts because the heaviness of thoughts has caused you to forget what the Lord told you first. The only thing half of y'all listening to me today can remember is what somebody did to your non-meditating on the first word of God self, which your non-meditating self. You don't know how to meditate on the first word that God told you concerning that thing that you love. If God said he was going to save you and your whole household, he's going to save you and your whole doggone household. He don't care how stupid your household acting. The prom he, he, the, he made the promise to you. Let your dog on children go out there and act stupid. The prodigal son's daddy couldn't do nothing, but the boy came home. The only thing, the only thing half of y'all can remember is what somebody did to your non-meditating on the word of God tale. That's all you can remember. Joseph did not remember what his brothers did to him. He did not remember it. Jesus did not remember that Peter had denied him three times. He still told Mary, go and tell my disciples and Peter to meet me in Jerusalem. God always puts our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. But you, you, you know, you know that you, you ain't, you ain't got to see a forgetfulness to put nothing in, but you're remembering the, because all you know how to do is, is, is remember everything somebody did bad to you. All you know how to remember is everything the, the, the people you love are, are, are doing against what you, what you want them to do versus what God want you to do. And what God wants you to do, he wants you to remember the first word he told you. Because that is the promise. We have to remember God so much that we forget ourselves and the objects that he has added to us in our life. We have to remember God so much that we and those objects are forgotten. 
or you will never remember the word that you hear from the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will never remember the word that you hear from the gospel of Jesus Christ. John 14 and 24, Jesus said, anyone who does not love me, see it's all about love. It's all about love. Will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. These ain't my words. Mm -mm. They belong to the Father who sent me. They belong to the Father who sent me. Remember them. Remember these words that you hear because they are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. They belong to the one who called me off of that cot in Egypt in 1993 and told me to go to Augusta, Georgia, start Christ our life ministries and preach his word. Oh yes, Sister Selena. We gotta be, we gotta be faithful to his word. So we got sister, we gotta be sister, we gotta stop playing God for some Rudy Tooty Pooty Joker when we hear his word. I mean, when God sends his word, he, he, God ain't, ain't giving us his word just for us not to, to take heed to it. He's giving us his word to give us a sure foundation that we can stand on, a sure foundation that will take us into the second eternity. Genesis 22, 3 through 12. Here we go. So we already read verse. Let's go back and read. Let's go back and read uh, verse 2. And then we'll jump into 3 through 12. So let's read it so we'll be together. God said to Abraham, he said, take now your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Here we go, verse three. Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and claved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. I'm here in Augusta. I'm in the place God told me. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. There it is. There we go right there. There it is right there. Y'all want to go back to it? Let's go back to the verse we read. Let's go back to it. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. Our God, will you not judge them the heaviness of thoughts? For we have no power to face this vast army of thoughts attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Let's go back to Abraham's eyes. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Me and Isaac, we're gonna go worship God, then we're gonna come back, even though God had told him to offer this boy as a birth sacrifice. Abraham remembered the first word. I want y'all to stay right here. I want you to stay right there with, with, with my asses. And, 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 me, and me and Isaac, me and this object that I love a whole lot, but we're gonna go, we're gonna go up there. We're gonna go to Mount Moriah. We're gonna go to the mountain that God told me to go to. We're gonna go worship. We ain't doing no sacrificing of nobody's life. Because that's what the second thing said. That's not what the first, the first thing, the first thing said, we, no, 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 I'm going to establish my covenant, an everlasting covenant with Isaac. Abraham didn't remember the second word, but he obeyed it. He didn't remember it, but he obeyed it. Because it was a test of love. Me and the lad, we're going to go up to this mountain and we're going to worship him, and then we're going to come to you again. 
And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Ah, why are you taking this fire? Why are you taking this wood? Why are you taking this arm in the name of it? Why are you taking this knife? See that thing, that thing? See, when, see, when Isaac saw the wood, when Isaac saw the knife, and when Isaac saw the fire, Isaac had to ask his daddy something. Isaac, and Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father! And he said, Here am I, my son. Here am I, my object that I love. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood in the name of Jesus. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Where is it in the name of Jesus? I want to know why we going up on this mountain in the name of Jesus. And we ain't got no lamb to take with us because you told them men we're going to go up here and we're going to worship and we're going to offer a burnt offering to the Lord. But I don't see it. I don't see nothing. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. I hope I didn't read that too fast. In the name of Jesus. Y'all know, know what Abraham just said right there? Do y'all know what Abraham just said right there? Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. Him and them. God will provide himself. Oh, y'all ain't catching that. So if so, Pastor Red provides himself to Christ our life ministries. See, see, God will provide himself a lamb. So, so what did Abraham tell us? Abraham told us, you can see, Abraham told us John 3:16. In Gen if John 3.16 was first spoken in Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, was the first time John 3.16 was ever spoken. Y'all know what John 3.16 says? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Abraham gave his only begotten son through faith. And because he believed in God, the everlasting covenant was established with Isaac and his seed after him. God will provide himself a lamb. I'm not providing God no lamb. I'm just going to walk in the faith of the promise. And I'm not going to stagger not to walk up this doggone mountain with no wood, with no fire in my hand. I'm not going to stagger. Me and you going up here, we're going to worship, and then we're going to come back down this mountain. No problem asked. And they came to the place which God told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood on it, laid the wood in order. He didn't just lay the wood. It says he laid the wood in order. In the name of Jesus, do everything decent and in order. That's how Christ our life ministries is laid out. Decent and in order. Hallelujah. And he bound Isaac, his son. Hallelujah. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. In the name of Jesus. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay the object that he loved. That he had waited 25 years for. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Mm, 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 no, 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 no. See, 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 this, this is a beautiful, see, Moses got called on out of a burning bush. Abraham got called on out of heaven. Somebody going to hear this teaching today. An angel of the Lord called on him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only object that you really wanted from me, from me. Remembrance. Remembrance of the Lord's 
promises should never be forgotten and should always be feared so that we will not forget them. Remember what I mean, have God, have, have God, have you, have you, have you ever, con, have you had any conversations with God and, and, he, and he told you something? Have, have, have you? Have you? Cause, cause if he, cause if he told you something, then you're, you're a stupid person for not remembering that. Cause, cause you never, cause you, you, cause you never know. Cause I, I did 22 years in the military and I remember that every morning I had to be a formation at 630. I never missed a formation. I, rem I remember, I remember what a, what a, what a private rank was. I remember what PFC was, special sergeant, staff sergeant, sergeant first class, uh, first sergeant, sergeant major. I remember second lieutenant, lieutenant, uh, internet captain, major, uh, lieutenant colonel, colonel, in the name of Jesus, brigadier general, major general, lieutenant general, hallelujah, come on now. Remember all of that. Remembrance of the Lord's promises. Remembrance of the Lord's promises should never be forgotten. Oh, yeah, Dickens Stevenson, withholding nothing. Withholding, let, let go of it. Let, let go, let God. You got to let go and you got to let God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The only thing, the only thing, hear me now, hear me now. The only thing stopping you from living like Abraham. The only thing stopping you from living like Abraham is belief that is caused by the heaviness of thoughts all because you can't remember what the Lord said to you. And the reason why you can't remember it is because once he tell it to you, you never, you never meditate on it. But you know how to meditate on every doggone thing else. Yet you are constantly telling the Lord, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yeah, that, that's what you keep saying. Never mind. No, never mind. You, you probably don't even remember saying that either. Never mind. I, you probably don't remember saying that. So, but if you have said that, then if you hid something in your heart, how have you forgotten where you hid it at? Because if you, if, if you forgot where you hid it at, then you're stupid for not remembering where you hid it at. I can tell you this, if Pastor Red hides something, I tell you I know where I hid it. I've never hid nothing and forgot where I hid it at. I know exactly where I hide stuff at. Hallelujah. So if I know in the name of Jesus, if I know where I can hide uh, physical objects, uh, then I ought to know where I'm hiding spiritual word. Uh, since I call myself a man of God, uh, then I should know where I'm hiding uh, the word of God in my heart. Uh, every time the heaviness of thoughts come upon me to make me to sin uh, so that I might not sin against him that made me the promise. Here it is, Isaiah 38, 1 through 5. Isaiah 38, 1 through 5. In those days, Hezekiah became sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set the house in order. That, that word is, they can say that word, order. I tell you, I tell you, you know, you do you know what you know what takes your house out of order? You know what takes your house out of order? Heaviness of thoughts. Set that house in order. Why? Why? Matthew twenty one and thirteen. Matthew twenty one and thirteen. It says, "My house," because that was in Hezekiah's house. That was the Lord's house. And Hezekiah has set the Lord off because Hezekiah has showed all the kings, them, them, them sinful Gentile king, they came there and he showed them everything that was in the father's house that was supposed to be hidden in the father's house. Nobody was supposed to know. And that's why, that's why nobody could get into the Holy of Holies until Christ. Nobody could get in there but the high priest until Christ rent the veil into. Now we can all go in there. 
set thine house in order. Matthew 21, 13. Jesus says, my house. My house shall be called the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. What, what's causing us to make our own life a den of thieves? Heaviness of thought. Heavy thoughts make us stop praying to God. Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. You think you think Hezekiah went into a went into a, a, a man, 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 that was man, Isaiah, man. I know Isaiah to be a man of God. I know this, I know Isaiah to be a man whose word comes to pass. I know that Isaiah is a true prophet of God. I know when this guy speaks, stuff happens. I know that. And and but he didn't he didn't do that either. He didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have no Rolodex in his head of, 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 and he didn't get fearful of what Isaiah told him. Look what the guy did. Look what the guy did. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord that had told Isaiah to tell him to set the house in order for thou shalt die and not live. Hezekiah prayed, and this is what this dude prayed. He said, remember now. Calling to one's mind something done in the past. You know, Lord, I, I, I need to call, Lord, I need to call something to your mind. I, I know, I know that, I know that I should not have shown them your house. But, but I need to call something to your mind. Remember now, oh Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with the perfect heart. I, 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 I ain't walking you in, in a staggered state now. I ain't walking you uh, in, in, in unsteady as, as if I was about to fall. No, I ain't, I ain't walk like that. Oh, Lord, remember, I beseech thee, how I have walked before you in truth and in a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. Now, this mess I did in my sight, yes, Lord, I, I've sinned. But I need you to remember what I've done in your sight. How I have walked in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, The God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Tears for God to remember him and not what he done by not keeping his house in order. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. All because when Isaiah told him he was going to die and not live, rather than him allowing the thoughts of that prophecy to consume his mind, he remembered the power of prayer. He remembered the power of prayer truth-filled conversation of the heart with God. And he took this truth-filled conversation of the heart and he told God to remember him, how he had walked before him in truth and in perfect heart. And through that truth-filled conversation of the heart with God, 
God told Isaiah to go back to the, the second. I told you, I told you, I told you, see, see this, this, see, if it ain't no life, if, see, see, there was life when it came to Abraham, there was life in the first, death in the second. When it came to Hezekiah, it was death in the first, but life in the second, because life is always more powerful than death, because life includes God. It includes the word of God. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. The heaviness of thoughts. The heaviness of thoughts. When you begin to remember the promises of God, if you begin to meditate in his word, if you begin, begin to spend more time with God than you do with the object that you love. See, Isaac was an object to Abraham. Death was an object to Hezekiah. By offering Isaac on the mountain, Abraham glorified God. By falling on his, by turning to the wall and falling on his face and crying tears to God, Hezekiah glorified God. How do you glorify God when you're under heaviness of thoughts? Because that's what we have to figure out today. How we're going to glorify God in spite of the heaviness of thoughts, in spite of everybody around us, in spite of every other breathing, human breathing object around us, including family members. How are we going to be able to make sure that we're still giving God all the glory. Want me to tell you how? Remember the promises of God to you, not to them, not to you. Not, it, it's, a, it, it, it's up to Dela to figure out the promises of God for her. It's up to Reggie to figure out the promises of God to him. It's up to Ezra to figure out the promises of God to her. I'm working on the promises of God that he gave to me. That's what I'm working on. That's right, Deacon Stevenson. And I'm breathing, eating, and drinking that promise every day. And there is nothing Deli, Reggie, and Ez Ezrene, or no other human on planet Earth can stop me from breathing, eating, and drinking on an everyday basis. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God, we love you. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the audience. Thank you for those that's going to eat, breathe, and drink this word until it gets inside of their body like as if it was the flu in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Y'all's prayers are, are what's getting y'all these messages. I know y'all praying. I, I know y'all praying for me. I, I can tell y'all praying for me. Cause these, cause, cause we we getting these messages. God, God giving me these messages because it's something y'all are doing on y'all's end to keep y'all's pastor lifted up so that I will be about his business. So that when y'all come here every Thursday and every Sunday, you will get a right. You'll get fed right. You won't get a bunch of, of worldly teaching. You'll get straight word from God. The only way I'm able to do that is somebody is upholding me in prayer that's causing me to Stay so focused 
on God that I'm able to capture his words when he speaks them to me and put them on these PowerPoint slides because I'm going to tell you, you to, to start the first slide, once the first slide gets started, I'm gone. It is, it is how to open up the first slide. And so, apparently, y'all must be offering up some serious prayer for y'all's pastor, for him to, to have 450 messages on YouTube channel that are completely different messages, but tie into one another. And I thank y'all for your prayers. I thank y'all for allowing me to minister God's word to y'all because the word that I minister and you're believing it and you're applying it to your life and it means that you're trusting the word that that word is going to see that you get into the second eternity. Therefore, I make sure that I spend time with God to get y'all this word. And all y'all have to do is hear it, receive it, meditate on it, and talk to God about it. See that? See that? See that? Hear it, receive it, talk to God about it. And, what, and then whatever God tells you, begin to live it in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this awesome word today. We thank you for this two-part series on the heaviness of thoughts. I thank you for my audience. I thank you for my beautiful church members that were here with me today to help me, amen to encourage me, amen, with their comments. I love y'all. I love their comments, Lord. Let them never stop commenting, God. I thank you because it lets me know that they're in tune to the message that I'm teaching and that they're not just letting it play and they're off somewhere else while the message is playing. They're actually uh, focused on what's being said and they're receiving what's being said. God, I love you. Thank you, Lord, that you counted me faithful, put me into the ministry when I am a sinner saved by grace, just like the people under the sound of my voice. I'm no more knowing it than anybody else. No more knowing it than anybody else. I'm just walking in the calling that you call me in. It has nothing to do with my faithfulness. It has everything to do with the calling that I'm faithful to in the name of Jesus. God, protect us all till we meet again on Tuesday night with Pastor King or here Thursday for another word from on high. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for joining me today. I love every last one of you. Amen and amen.